Hello, and welcome back to the Simplifiers podcast, where we take topics in business and in life and simplify them. And friends, I want to take a slightly different right turn today, and I want to talk about cooking. Let's be real. If we haven't got good, nourishing, life-giving food going into our bodies every single week, guess what? That's going to ripple out into all aspects of our work and our life. And one of the things that I have started to really get into is cooking with my Instant Pot. Now, I had to find the perfect guest to really simplify how to work and how to cook with an Instant Pot. And lo and behold, the universe certainly did provide. His name is Jeffrey Eisner. He is the blogger and creator over at Pressure Luck Cooking. It's a leading, acclaimed, and easy-to-follow recipe blog all about cooking with an Instant Pot. Now, you've probably seen him on the Food Network, Good Morning America, Rachel Ray, and more, because you know what? His first cookbook became an international bestseller within a week of its release. His second book that's come out today is called The Lighter Step-by-Step Instant Pot Cookbook, and it features more health-conscious recipes tailored for those who are on keto, paleo, gluten-free, or even diabetic-friendly lifestyles. So I'd like to welcome to the Simplifiers podcast, Jeffrey Eisner. Hey, Jeff. Hello. Thank you for having me, Mary. (laughs) I'm so glad you're here, and I really think that this is a fun topic because, you know, We do talk and simplify cash flow and budgets and mindset and all of that. So it's nice to take a departure and let's talk about food today. Yeah, sounds delicious to me. (laughs) Yeah. So first off, how in the world did you get into cooking with an Instant Pot? Like this is a thing that's sort of taken over your life in the last few years, right? To say the least, it's actually changed my life. Um, You know, I always loved to cook. It was always, it was therapy for me. It was a passion and my cooking school was my grandmother. I never had any formal training other than you put a little bit of this in here, Jeffalo, you put a little bit of that, and <laughs> that's that was it. Yeah. Um, when I, I when I was, you know, the goal was to be an actor when I was younger, and um, that didn't exactly pan out. It, it just wasn't – I like stability in my life. So I went the route – of uh, going into the public relations world where I was a video producer. And then I realized I'm not very happy doing this. I was mm-hmm. never like fulfilled. And I, I would come home and just be stressed out and I would cook to make myself more calm. Um, so I've always also, that intertwined with having to have the latest gadgets in life. Uh, I discovered the Instant Pot about uh, going on four years ago now when it kind of first came out. And it was on Amazon. It was just looking me in the face and it was like, buy me. So I did. <laughs> and I saw the reviews were super, like, you know, they were really strong. And I was like, you know what? I got to give this thing a try. Let me see how it works. And I got it. It came. And then I was like, where do I start? It was kind of intimidating. It's also yeah. a pressure cooker, which pressure cookers have a, like a negative connotation from back in the day. They're just kind of scary looking if you look at old school pictures of them. And I was like, well, what am I going to do here? I mean, I, I'm not going to be afraid of this thing. I'm going to conquer it. And then I went online looking and I saw a lot of people were afraid to use it. Yeah. I'm like, this is an, op- this is an opportunity for me who worked in PR in, as a video producer to come up with my own video, to learn it share it out and to see what happens, see if I can get excited by it and see what people have to say. Well, I made a mac and cheese recipe in there and I shared it out into the ether. I went into the, I just went on to like cold calling, like knocking on the door, like back in the old day, found these groups on Facebook, went, started a YouTube channel and then it just took off. It's like, it seemed like like people, cause you know, you go to YouTube for everything nowadays. You can go from, you know, learning how to fix your shoelaces to learning how to do your plumbing in your house. Yeah. So I was like, I know people will probably search for this and it was an opportunity I saw and I took it and I was like, look, I love take, making the videos. It's fun. And if anything comes of it, great. If not, well, it was fun. And what have you got to lose? Right? Yeah. It and, took, yeah. And, and that's the thing is that you have really created some a fun, playful way to approach. Like you said, it's a very intimidating kitchen appliance. It's not like a toaster. You plug it in and just stick the toast in. Done. There are bits and bobs and buttons and things. And oh my gosh, it was super intimidating for me when I first got mine like seven or eight months ago. And I have to be honest, 
I think it sat in the box for a good month yeah. before I was like, uh, I don't know what to do with this. My brother gave it to me as a gift. Um, and so your your videos, which side note, everything that Jeff talks about in today's conversation, you can find over the show notes at thesimplifierspodcast.com. And I highly recommend checking out his YouTube channel because your videos are fun. It, you're just an everyday guy, just like my brother, who would be like, okay, so here's the real deal. Here's how this thing works. So so let's talk about that. So if somebody was like me and they have had the Instant Pot in a box in the corner of their kitchen for a long time, super intimidated, like give me a couple of tips that would help them get over that hump. Okay. Well, you got, first of all, you have it. So yeah. let's, uh, let's waste not want not, shall we? Let's, yes. let's take it out of the box and have some fun. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, it's uh, look at cooking number one as – it's, it's, it's fun. It's not the end of the world. You're making some food, right? Yeah. And if all else fails, you order some pizza. Right. <laughs> or, so, or, a, or a salad. Yes. Or maybe some salad on your pizza. I don't know. <laughs> um, but it, just don't take it too seriously. Look at it and be like, I'm going to have some fun with this. Start with something that's very simple. Just, you know, a soup, a quick pasta, which is very easy to make in the pot, some rice, some hard-boiled eggs could not be easier to do. Mm -hmm. uh, egg, eggs is two ingredients. You're going to put some water in and you're going to put eggs and that's it. And yeah. you're going to be blown away that you've made hard-boiled eggs in this newfound fashion. Um, so start small is my tip. Uh, don't be freaked out. It's just cooking. <laughs> and, um, you know, just let loose. And from there, you're going to, there's going to be, you're going to see either you're going you're to enjoy it or you're not going to enjoy it. It's going to be one or the other, or you might have a great success the first time, or it might be, ah, what did I do wrong? And you maybe want to see what, how you can fix it the next time around. So it's really just, you know, you about just have confidence in yourself doing this. You can do this. If I can do this, this is the number one thing here, Mary. I am not professional. <laughs> I'm an am like, as I told you, I'm, I'm an amateur cook guy who just likes to cook. And if I can do this, literally anybody can do it. Yeah. It's really quite simple to do. And so here's the things that I learned by watching your videos. First and foremost, I didn't know this, but there's those little lips on the top of the lid. You can pop it over and stick it into the, the little right. notch. And so you're not burning yourself on the, the hot steam or otherwise. I was like, oh, well, duh. No one told me that. Yeah. I didn't know that. And then yeah. second, you, you know, you talk about in your, your like, okay, here, how to get started video. Um, you know, you don't need to worry about all the buttons. There, there's just like manual or pressure cook. So what buttons should we start with first? There's, that's the thing about the Instant Pot. Like the, the most, in, I think, intimidating thing about it are all the buttons. Right. And forget, forget, and I say in my book, forget them. Really, mm -hmm. don't pay attention. A lot of them, are, they're just presets. They're, that's really all they are. I only use the button that says saute, which transforms this thing basically into a pot on the stove. Yep. It's picture using a frying pan, a skillet, a pot, whatever. It's that that's what it does. You can saute veggies, whatever. And then you'll switch the function basically from that to the pressure cook function. And then just it's about just setting time. And that's really it. Yeah. It's it's just a few buttons you're gonna care about. Which I can imagine you living in Queens in New York, you've probably got limited counter space and so it's nice to have just one place to saute and cook from and you're not having to like do multiple things in multiple places, right? And in one pot. Let's yeah. not forget one pot instead of having – because that's the thing about a slow cooker. You, If you want to do some th things in there, which is – I'm not going to knock a slow cooker, but um, the Instant Pot, in my opinion, has put it onto the top shelf at this point because you can't really saute in them. If you have want to brown some meat before, you got to do it in the frying pan and then put it in the slow cooker. Not to mention it takes hours to do something in a slow cooker, whereas the Instant Pot will give you the same thing in a, for literally a fraction of the time with, in my opinion, more tender and flavorful results. Um, so yeah, it, it's just about convenience and as you, you know, it's all about simplifying here and that's exactly what this is. Yeah. And I, I, at the beginning thought, oh, do I need to buy all the accessories and the things? And, you know, I'll be frank, I actually bought some accessories that were like on half off sales or whatever, but then I realized I don't need all the stuff. Like I just need to get started. And so the first recipe I started with was literally how to cook rice, like plain and simple white rice. And when I got more complicated, confident just doing that. I was like, well, I could probably make quinoa. I could probably make soups. I mean, like it, it does like require a little bit of baby steps to get that confidence, right? A hundred percent. It's like with anything, you're going to, you want to start small, 
Mm -hmm. uh, don't be too, I could be a little ambitious at first. I think the, the first thing I made was a mac and cheese. I think the second thing that I like attempted was like, uh, a, like pot roast, which is still not super ambitious, but for, you know, some people are intimidated at the thought of making meat and, you know, a big roast, Right. but it's the easiest thing in the world, but ex it's exactly that really. Mm. It's yeah. Yeah. So your first cookbook was all yummy, super flavorful foods that are like comfort mm -hmm. foods and things, right? So yes. the second book is all about cooking lighter. So what does cooking lighter look like for you these days? Like what, what recipes are you loving right now? Yeah. Um, well, cooking lighter to me, it's, it's, it's such a, Oh, an ambiguous term, really, because mm. it's, I, I want a million people wanted a book that had keto, I wanted paleo, gluten free, dairy free, low right. carb, you know, they, everything. So I'm like, I'm, those are the separate volumes in themselves. And I'm like, I'm only going to do one lighter book, and I'm going to make it umbrella everything as mm. best as possible. So, you know, that's the thing with if you're on keto, you can eat, you can have bacon and heavy cream at every meal, right? And cheese and nonstop if you want, and you can slather it all over meat. It's fine, right? Mm -hmm. um, but if you are paleo, you can't have any cheese whatsoever, right. uh, and you but you and you get a plenty of sweet fruits. Um, but on keto, you can't have too many of the sweet fruits. It's just a whole thing. So, uh, in order to make everybody happy with the book, I you know I specify which recipes are which lifestyle compliant, and if it isn't, I'll put a little plus sign saying how you can make it lifestyle compliant that way. Uh, it's so you know what I mean. So, like in terms of like food itself, my mission with this book was to show you that eating lighter in general doesn't mean you have to sacrifice literally a lick of flavor for anything because there's always, always substitutions that w when you, because when if you think of a recipe, it's like an ensemble of uh, uh, characters, right, yeah. that go into it. Um, is there, Since they're all working together, there are certain things you won't even know that you're not putting in, whether if versus if it was more of a comfort type recipe, which I'm that's certainly known for doing as well. Mm. Um, so, you know, you in the book you have, for instance, crispy kale rice. I'm not interested in kale typically. It's not really my favorite thing in the world. But if you're going to give it a little bit of like a nice little crisp in the pot and then toss it with some brown rice and some mushrooms, which I happen to love. If you don't like mushrooms, don't add mushrooms. Mm -hmm. uh, and if you want to give it a little bit of a sweet like flavor to it, like by adding some coconut aminos, which is a fabulous substitute for soy sauce, uh, less sodium than that. And it has um, it's gluten free. Mm. Uh, no, there's no soy in it. You know, it's little things like that. And then actually in the book, I also, in the introduction, list an entire pantry that I suggest you have, uh, all easy to find ingredients. No, I'm not sending you running to the craziest health food markets to find these things. It can be found in pretty much any market or our friend online. You know? Yeah. And maybe that's the fear, you know, and I'll be the first to raise my hand. I think if you have gotten used to making kind of packaged processed foods like mac and cheese in a box or, um, you know, frozen meals for, for convenience, and now you're moving back to whole foods, foods that don't come in a box and aren't, you know, super chemical processed. It can be scary because it's like, oh, right, we're using real ingredients here to yeah. make the same things that are nine times more healthy, more likely, and uh, more flavorful and, and actually nourishing too, right? Yeah. Yes, absolutely. Indeed. Mm. It's exactly that. And, and like, it's like, if you look at a box of mac and cheese in a store and you see, you know, it's like, it's a little horrifying to read the, the label sometimes. Yeah. Uh, and you're better off, even though you're putting like a bunch of cheese in there and dairy and all that stuff, you're much better off making it yourself if you're going to do it. And mm. it's going to taste a thousand times better. It's one yeah. of the easiest recipes also. Yeah. Uh, granted, granted, it's, it's hard to find a light mac and cheese, I'd say. Um, but <laughs> Look, there are options if you wanted to do like a, you know, a low fat, use low fat cheese or even like a vegan cheese instead, yeah. you well, can make it happen. And see, I'm curious what your thought process is on this. But for me, I am a vegetarian, uh, though I'm not a diehard, uh, you know, um, but I, I always look to 80-20 rule, you know, 80% of the food that I put into my body every single week, super healthy, clean, whole foods, yummy stuff, green leafy vegetables and all. And 20% could be the mac and cheese, could be a little bit of bread, it could be this, that or and the other. And I mean, how do you go about eating and cooking lighter for yourself? That's exactly like the best way, in my opinion, to do it. Like yeah. you should never, you shouldn't deprive yourself of the comfort things in life. Right. You shouldn't. Because you're going to just 
one day if, if, if you're let's say you're like i'm gonna go on a diet and i hate that word i really do and you're like i'm, I'm not i'm just gonna eat this this and this today and like and, the, and then for the next months two months or whatever when the time comes and then you're at a party or whatever and you're like ah i've i've, I've reached where i'm happy where i am now and then like i can eat whatever i want again and it's like then the pizza's there and you eat that and you the chinese food's there you eat it all like you know what right. i mean like when i'm it just all that hard work is kind of goes away. It's so much wiser and more satisfying and, and, and sustainable to, like you said, 20 percent comfort in my life and then the rest of it. I could be healthy. You can. It's about just fitting it in at appropriate times mm. and while you're doing it. And that's to me the key to sustaining like a, a, a happy body and a happy attitude and outlook on life. Totally, totally. And so you're not in that constant shame cycle of binging and deprivation, binge deprivation, right. you're, you're, ha you're changing your relationship with food altogether and also with cooking. And, and that's what I think has been interesting for me as I learn about cooking more healthy, using real whole foods, fruits and vegetables, all the things, especially herbs and spices. Like that's the thing, right? That's your gig altogether. It, it's a, it, it is a game changer. It, you take the fear out, you experiment and play and uh, food doesn't become this evil thing that you're, you know, grappling with and push and pull and all that. It becomes more fun, right? A hundred percent. Absolutely. I think what gets exciting about it is that uh, once you try something that's lighter uh, and you realize that, you know, that you're controlling what you're putting in and you're making that saying instead of, instead of using sour cream, I'm going to use some Greek yogurt. It mm -hmm. makes a difference. It really does. And then you see um, how delicious it can taste. You'll all tell yourself, well, I could do this. I can yeah. eat like this. And then it's rewarding. It feels good. And you feel better when you start to slim down a little bit from doing that. Now, of course, that being said, you can eat as light as you wish, but it's all about portion control because if you eat the entire pot, <laughs> it's still, you know what I mean? It's, yes. <laughs> you have to control yourself. So yeah. just because something's lighter doesn't mean it's okay to eat it all, the entire pot that you're just made of food. It's about portioning it pr properly. Yeah. And I remember and it, yeah. you talked about like, um, what was it? The, the anagram for deep, deep lifestyle. Yes. Let's walk through that exactly. real quick. Yeah, it's I, I call it living deeply, exactly deep, because who doesn't like a nice anagram, right? Um, or whatever we want to call it. Yeah, anagram. Uh, D is for determination. You have to be determined if you want to do something like this. Mm. Um, the first E will go for exercise. I think it's important. That when Now, exercise is a very general term, and some people just don't even want to hear it, and I understand. But exercise counts if you literally walk around your block one time a week. Like totally. that's, that's exercise. If you weren't doing it before, guess what? But it's it's progress, and then as you continue to do it more, your body will get used to it more, and you could do it a little bit more. Or of course, it could also range to something as crazy as waking up at five in the morning on a Sunday and doing you know CrossFit, uh, whatever, whatever works for you. It's just something works, anything. The other E would be for eating wisely, like being mindful about what you eat and what when and when you do it. Uh, you don't want to eat something at you know right before you go to sleep because you're going to wake up in the morning and feel like there's a brick in your stomach and it's going to really offset your day as in like I uh, well, why even bother I already feel like I've screwed up yeah. and you just eat what it's it's a lot of it has to do with that mentality it's just be think before you eat you know um, and then P is portion control for deep and it's like we just said you have to just really just be uh, mindful about how much you're eating. Be just and eat slowly. Try, mm -hmm. That's my biggest downfall. I can shovel food, and then you're not. <laughs> you, you have to just be slow. Like it's a perfect time to do it when you're, you know, if, if, when you have company, of course, because you can have a conversation. Put the phone down mm -hmm. for a second. You know, things like that. Answer an email in between if you're by yourself. Um, it's really about that. Yeah. So those are the four things. That's good. I love that. Uh, and it's always a nice reminder. These are things that we intuitively, deep, deep, deep down inside, know is true, but we forget, right? Like this is the no, simple that's... parts of life that actually make eating and cooking food more joyful and actually, you know, deeper, I believe it affects your digestion system. It affects your <laughs> your energy levels. It affects everything. So it ripples out when when you look at joy or look at cooking food with joy. It it changes everything. 
Mm-hmm. I agree. So let's talk about our pantry. So um, given the recipes in your cookbook, what should we stock in our pantry as staples specifically for pressure cooking? For pressure cooking specifically, uh, the mo- number one rule is no liquid, no pressure. You need to have liquid in a pot, enough of it to come to pressure. Mm-hmm. Um, because this, the process is that you know it's it, it's essentially just boiling water or any kind of liquid that's in there, and that it's it gets to the point where there's nowhere for it to go because the lid is securely put on there, and uh, that's what and it's almost like a little tea kettle, then a little pin will pop up in the lid, it'll lock, and then it cooks. Yep. So liquid, and so that being said, broth to me it always adds more flavor to things. Now whether this be any kind of broth that you love, like if I I love this product called Better Than Bouillon, it's great. Uh, but you can I, I typically like to use low sodium broths when I'm using it because honestly the difference is very minor in my opinion, especially since we're just using it as a flavor base. You could always make your own broth by simply just. If you, whether you're a vegetarian, just get a bunch of vegetables, leave the skins on, whatever vegetables you want, and some water, and just boil it in there for about two hours. Let it pressure cook, yep. and when it's off, when it cool, season it how you want to season it. Yeah. Um. You have the same thing with chicken or beef broth. Use the bones of the chicken, the, the crazy parts you normally might not get, like the feet, things like that. Um. You would use to make some of like that. So broth is super important. Um, and another thing, the, the yeah. suggestion you had there of better than bu- bouillon, uh, I swear you yeah. guys, this is the jam. Mm. It is so good, so flavorful, and it has vegetarian and non veggie uh, options. And also, I, I like it because it's small, it doesn't take up a lot of space in the pantry. Whereas if you're buying big jugs of broth, it can take up a lot of space. So, yeah, so that's true. a secret ninja lasts. trick there for sure. It's great. Yeah. Great. What else do oh. I need in my pantry? You need. I think you definitely need uh, some seasoned salt because, to me, seasoned salt is one of. It's, I think it's my go-to seasoning. Mm. It's less so. It's less sodium than iodized salt, than regular salt, uh, by a bunch. Actually, if you look at the, the labels between the two, it's it's less, and it's a way more, has a lot more flavor going for it as well. It's not spicy. Um, if we're going to name brands, just, I mean, I don't have a, a partnership with this brand or anything, but I love Lawry's. It's like the, the classic yeah. and you can find it like at any market. Um, it's like, if I have to pick like one spice, it's going to be that for pretty much everything. So definitely have some of that on hand. Uh, of course you want to have like, you know, it's important if, whether you're, uh, following dairy or not dairy with your life, have some element of that, whether that be uh, a milk or like a half and half or a non-dairy milk, like an unsweetened almond milk, cashew milk. Don't get one that has like the flavors like vanilla or, or sweet, just because it'll substitute for milk. Yeah. Um, speaking of which, we know, we'll never pressure cook. Uh, most dairy under pressure because it can curdle and it can, you don't want to do that. Like cheese, you add that at the very end. Mm. But non-dairy milks, you could add prior because, well, guess what? There's no dairy in it. Yeah. Um, and I explain all this in, in my book as well. So I would say those things, those things are very, very key to have for sure. And um, just so you ha- always have it on hand. Have some rice, some, have some quinoa, some beans. You can have some eggs. Any of those things are just important to have in your pantry at all times. And I'm, I mean, I, I go into this in great detail in the book, and I give you a list. Literally, if you ever want to go to the market and stock your kitchen, it's there. Um, yeah. Those, those are the key basics. And you know what I, I love about the book in particular um, is the way it's laid out. Uh, the table of contents, you can quickly look through all the recipes, see which ones are keto or vegan or vegetarian, and it's very easy to follow. And then anything that isn't vegetarian, for me, I just swap out, like say if it's a beef yeah. stock to a veggie stock, you can always make substitutions. But when it comes exactly. to stocking my pantry, what I have been doing lately is if there's one thing on your list that I don't have, I just add one thing on in my shopping cart every single week so I just build it slowly over time um, but yeah like my my key go-to's are big bags of dried black beans rice quinoa things like that um, you know and and same same with the spices so if I don't have I don't know bay leaves or thyme or whatever I just build it one at a time one per week as I go on so I build the pantry yeah that's a very smart thing to do very yeah. smart and go, wholesale clubs is a great place also to stock up on these things because they're going to last you forever. It's a better price for, for, for how much more you're getting. Mm. Um, yeah. And they have a, you know, yeah. 
Yeah. And you know, another tip that I just thought of, um, no matter where you are in the world listening to this, it's more than likely sure that you've got a buy nothing group, B-U-Y nothing. Again, the links are all in the show notes. And that is such a brilliant resource. So if you find buy nothing Manhattan or buy nothing Phoenix or buy nothing Paris, you can actually put out onto the Facebook group, hey, I'm in search of new spices for my pantry. And people in your neighborhood or in your area, Area. Say, hey, I've got a whole pantry of spices that I'm not using. You can pick them up for free. So, you know, think about things like that that are just clever. So you're not having to fork over a lot of money to do this stuff. It can be very, very simple. Mm, those are all the nice people. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's amazing. I, trust me, Jeff. Yes. Amazing. So, I trust you. So talk to me about cooking for picky eaters or kids. What advice would you give parents? Don't tell them what's in it. <laughs> no, but, no, but seriously, I mean, you have obviously, if there's an allergy, you should, of course, always sure. be mindful of that. Um, but off and on, in all honesty, that's a rule that I have. Like, if, as long as they're, you know, it's, it's not going to violate a dietary restriction or a religious thing, like being kosher or whatever, uh, don't tell them sometimes what's in a dish. Just say, try this. And I'm telling you, nine times out of 10, they won't even realize that, like, let's say they hate cauliflower. Because let me tell you something in the lighter book, cauliflower is one of the best substitutes for potatoes. Mm. Um, and because, you know, potatoes are full of starch and they're amazing. You could do a million things with them. But when it comes down to them being soft, when you like you know, a mashed potato um, or um, like a chowder where sometimes we have potatoes in there, when it's cauliflower and it's softened, I don't even like cauliflower, by the way, when it's on its raw state. I'm not into it. But when it's cooked and it's softened up, it's an amazing substitute. Uh, oftentimes with the soup, like my cream of cauliflower in the book, yeah. um, we do a pureeing step before we even serve it. So it beco- you don't even know it's really in there. It just becomes part of the soup. And when it seasons up a little bit, it's you don't even realize. It's either say, honey, try this. And you know, if you're a soup lover, because who come let's get real, who doesn't love soup? Um, just try it out and then don't tell them. And then they're like, guess what? You just say cauliflower or something like that. And they'll be like, what? Yeah. And I think that in that moment, it gets the people excited about it. Like, wow, I like cauliflower. I didn't realize I liked it. And um, you know, that happened to be the first time when I ate escargot. <laughs> My parents were like, don't, I mean, of course, that's not the healthiest thing in the world, but like, they were like, <laughs> they wouldn't tell me what it really was. And I ate it and I was obsessed with it. And like, you just ate snails. And I'm like, what? What? <laughs> no. So yeah. it's, it, 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 that's the way I look at it, truly. It's like, yeah. just try it out. Trust me, you're going to enjoy this. My, if you cook, especially if you're the cook in the household, what choice do they have anyway, right? Like you're cooking for them. So it's like, give it a try. And if it's, you know, I feel like kids nowadays, um, I don't have children, but I have a niece and nephew, well, two, two nephews now. Um, and they, they're so impressionable at such a young age with food that you, and they can become picky, like just like that, that it's like incorporated earlier if you can. And I think they'll eventually take to these things. Yeah, I think you're right. Yeah. And I had read somewhere some long time ago that your taste buds, the actual cells on your tongue, uh, change every seven years. And so things that you thought as a child, oh, I don't eat avocados or oh, I don't eat cauliflower or whatever it is, you actually might be surprised. You might actually like it now because I'm still on the hump of I don't know if I can eat olives and brine foods. Like it's just mm, not my thing. But maybe, yeah. maybe if I'm open minded and try it out, then who knows? You know, and again, that goes back to what you were saying earlier of just having fun and experimenting with it as well. Yeah. And I think if you want to eat lighter in general, you need to be a little open minded. I, I, you can't be super stubborn in your ways because if you're making the choice to eat lighter. You have to be a little open-minded as a result of it. No, it's not going to be like going to the drive-through and getting like a triple cheeseburger. You know, it's not. That's not what we're doing here. But it doesn't mean it's going to be any less satisfying on the taste buds or the stomach. You know, mm. you're going to feel. It's really about just. And I think I know this from my own experience. Uh, trying new things and trying food, and then realizing what I'm putting in my body is way better for me than if I were to have gone to the drive-through or. To eat and you know in a super like indulgent dish, um, yet I'm just as satisfied after eating. I, I'm going to make the choice to go that way, especially mm. if it's some results. When I look at myself in the mirror, you know it, it it pays off. It really does. Yeah, and you know 
I really appreciated reading in your book, you talk about in your introduction, your own weight loss journey and, and wellness journey for that matter. Um, it sounds like for you, the keeping weight off has been a struggle for a long time, just the same as me. Like I am right there in that same boat with you. Mm. What have you learned along the way like that you wish you knew earlier on when it comes to eating lighter? I think that what I... That it's that it's about really finding the balance and to to remind yourself the other stuff will always be there. It's not going anywhere. Yeah. Although when the pandemic began, I got a little freaked out when all my favorite Chinese restaurants were closed for a period <laughs> of time. I'm like, oh my gosh! I'm like, my I, I, if I had I known, I would have eaten this the last three months straight. Yeah. But no, thankfully there were, a lot of them have come back. Yeah. But no, it's it's about telling yourself uh, the food, the pizza, the you know the egg rolls, they're, they're always going to be there in the yeah. future, and you can reward. You know what I mean? So it's like it's not going anywhere, and, and you can have that, and you can certainly eat it, and um, it's just. Be a little more mindful if you if you know that you're gonna have some grand, fantastic family style meal at, a, at an Italian restaurant and do it up with all the carbs and the amazingness as you should if you're doing a meal like that, right? Um, plan for it. Mm. Start just eat lighter that week, and guess what? You're not gonna be a, you're not gonna don't starve yourself by the, by any stretch of the imagination. Just make more light conscious efforts when yeah. I am lighter, you know, I mean, when you're eating more, um, when you're planning something like that in, in your life. Mm. And I think that's what's, gonna, that's what keeps it sustainable. And that's what keeps us happy. Mm. And it kind of, it, it reminds me also of, um, I don't know if, did you read that book, Atomic Habits by James Clear? You know, he talks about that in particular of as you're changing habits, uh, to something that's more life giving, it, it, it's a matter of repetition. So for me, uh, four months ago, I would have been like, you're not going to get any kale into my body anytime soon. No way. Not even hiding and sneaking it in. But I've just started experimenting with cooking with kale or green leafy vegetables, collard greens, all of that. And actually, I love it. Like, I'm so a kale person now than I ever was before. And it takes that repetition of, of experimenting, trying new dishes, seeing what you like. And your taste buds also do change along the way, right? Yeah, absolutely, a hundred percent, definitely. I, I really do, and I agree with what you said about the taste. But I think they definitely d do shift. Yeah. Um. Yeah. It's just there's a lot involved in it, and it, it's just at the end of the day, it's food. Let's just tell us us that. And we we should also remind ourselves that, like you know, like what we're we're eating here isn't you know, it, it, it if we don't like it, you just don't try you don't eat it again it's it, it, it isn't a big these are there's a lot larger fish to fry so to speak in our lives than worrying too much about how something might taste mm. so just what have you got to lose other than trying and of course know if you're allergic to it or something prior you don't want to have any issues there um but it's it just really comes down to what have you got to lose mm. try it so what are your favorite favorite uh recipes from the second cookbook Oh, it's, it's, I mean, there, there's so many. And uh, I, my goal, like I said, was that everything had to be taste like it wasn't lighter per se. It had to taste like it was a full, um, del um, unbelievably delicious meal. I love my pork pozole recipe in there. Um, or I should say pozole. It's, I know I was pronounced that it's more of an S sound to it, even though it's spelled <laughs> with a Z. Um, it's a, a fantastic Mexican stew um, that's very um, reliant on um, – chilies in there but not spicy ones mm -hmm. we use ancho chilies which is essentially just dried poblano peppers so delicious um i love that the chicken cacciatore that i have in there um truly fantastic and the way i do mine is i you know i lighten it up a little bit i use no sodium added tomato you know products when i put them in there um and you can always add so if it doesn't taste salty enough or whatever for you which is by the way very rare that you'll ever try one of my recipes and feel like it needs more seasoning i feel <laughs> yeah. like you can always add a little bit more at the end Cool. Uh, something like that. And, you know, it's, it's, you're a vegetarian, like, and I love Indian food and I have tofu tikka masala instead of chicken tikka masala. Really delicious. And it's just loaded with protein and good stuff in there. Mm, I'm hungry and now. My, Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> you're, you have enticed my taste buds. And if you guys are curious as well, I highly recommend checking this out. His website again is pressureluckcooking.com. And the second cookbook came out today. So you can find that in bookstores all over the world or even at your local bookstore uh, right down the corner. It's called The Lighter Step-by-Step -Step Instant Pot Cookbook. Easy recipe for a slimmer, healthier you. 
Now, Jeff, I have a few questions as we wrap up. Um, and thank you again so much for your time. I think you know, hopefully, like just breaking down the uh, fear factor of using this newfangled uh, machine with all the buttons and gadgets. It, it really <laughs> is quite simple and really fun to play with. So here are my questions for you. Um, these are questions I like to ask everybody that comes on the podcast. First and foremost, what's one book or blog that you're reading these days that's either inspiring you or poking holes and challenging your belief system? Um, <laughs> I, I'm not the heaviest reader and I, when I do read, I like it to be really light. Yeah. So I'm, I'm having fun right now and I miss travel so much. Yes. Uh, it's been, uh, I think we all are a great deal on um, this guy. When I was in Palm Springs a year ago, I found this book with this guy named Charles Phoenix and it's, uh, addicted to Americana and it's a super kitschy fun book with all these like landmarks and stuff throughout the country and just, I love kitschy things and it just it's a great escape for me to just have some mindless fun and look at all the crazy things that this country has to offer and to put them on the list to at some point visit them. So yes. that's something that I enjoy. Um, I like to keep things as lighthearted as possible. Mm. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like, especially this past year, it's been kind of heavy on a lot of us. So uh, I, I, I like to, you know, I, I like to escape. Yeah, no, it's and that's a what I feel like. Yeah, that's a great book recommendation. And you know, I think sometimes we fall down the rabbit hole of self development books or professional books. And it's like, Oh, it's just a heavy rabbit hole. It's nice to have something that's light. And it gets yeah. your imagination sparked and all things. So we'll put yeah. the link in the show notes for that book for people if you guys want to check it out. So tell me who's somebody in your network that you know, personally, that you just feel is up to brilliant things, we could shine a spotlight on them. And who knows, maybe we'll have them on the podcast one day. I mean, I'm going to say this is because um, I feel like I was introduced to you from her as my cousin, Denise Silverman. And she, to me, is one of the most, um, I can't think of anybody who's more of a go-getter than her. She was a, a huge up-and-coming public relations star in New York um, back in her when she was in her 20s. And then she and her husband, my cousin, Mike, uh, she married and Mike is actually my blood cousin, Uh They've moved, they just upped their life and moved to Austin where she started and followed her passion with a uh, wedding planning industry. And then she quickly became like the top event planning company in Austin. Um, and then she, once, you know, after doing that for quite some time, very successfully, she switched, she switched gears again. And now she's into, um, the wine industry and it's just, it's fascinating for me to watch somebody build something from literally nothing, which she's done multiple times. And I just, She's a, she's an incredibly uh, wonderful person, so inclusive, cares about everybody else before herself. And um, she's also very involved with the Texas 4000, I believe it's called. It, it raises awareness for cancer. It's a big bike ride I think they do from like Alaska to – is it Texas? I'm not. So, it's a four, yeah, yeah four thousand miles. So that sounds about right. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So she inspires me a lot. And when I started Pressure Luck, actually, she was somebody that uh, I kept telling myself, if, you know, like, it was inspiring for me that if I'm like, if she did this, maybe I can do something like that for myself. Denise so it's, I would say Denise is a superstar. <laughs> I've known her yeah. for. God, like probably 15 years now. She is yeah. a superstar. So yes, I will link her up in the show notes. If people are curious to learn about Denise and all the things that she's up to, you can click over at the simplifierspodcast.com and hook up there. I believe gratitude and simplicity go hand in hand. Tell me, what are you grateful for today? I'm grateful that I'm alive. <laughs> I, I really am. I, it was. It's just been a crazy year. I'm grateful for I mean, me and my partner, Richard, both got this thing uh, when right when everything just stopped in, in early March last year when no one knew what was really going on. And it was around the same exact time Tom Hanks had gotten it. And I just kept checking Tom Hanks' Twitter every day, praying that he was still alive. Yeah. I'm like, if Tom Hanks is still alive, maybe I'll be OK. Yes. Uh, <laughs> but it was just so scary. And uh, I think a lot of us have put things into put this, put a lot of things into perspective for a lot of us. And. Uh, I'm just really, truly grateful to be here and above all else. Mm. That's really, that's what I have to say. It was scary for a little bit. And, uh, well, I'm just, and 
Yeah. I know that I'm grateful for you. And I'm so I'm sure your friends and family and your fans online are so grateful for you and your health and all the things that you're doing, your bright sunshine that's put out into the world. Uh, thank so you. Again, reminder, his website is pressureluckcooking.com. And again, the links are in the show notes, uh, including your social media handles and all of that. Is there one particular social media outlet that you like to hang out at? YouTube, Instagram? Uh, YouTube, I would say YouTube is probably one of my big ones for sure. Yeah, yeah so you just, what you got to do is type in pressure, like pressure cooking, luck, mm-hmm. and you'll find me. Yes. Just go, just to put it in anywhere, you'll find my handles. But I have to get up on the TikTok. That's like the hot thing now. And I'm totally behind. <laughs> so, yeah. um, pressure, look, or pressure cooking on TikTok. Hmm, that might be a whole new avenue. Who yeah, knows? Well, see. <laughs> <laughs> so um, my final question for you today is this. And again, thank you so much for your time today. Someone somewhere in the world is listening to you and I right now. She's got a, uh, an Instant Pot. It's sitting on her counter. She has not pulled it out of the package because she is absolutely intimidated by it what's one thing you could whisper into her ear right now just to encourage her in this moment (laughs) um wow i would whisper and i would tell her you can do this it's only dinner It's it's only dinner it's only dinner and you know, like I said, pizza is one phone call away if, it's, if it fails. That's all I was – you can do this is what I could what I tell them. Jeff, thank you so much for your time today. It's my pleasure. Thank you for having me, Mary. I really <laughs> – it was a lot of fun. 